welcome to the lecture on evidence based policy making. I am Dr. Jeevan Kumar, the faculty of public policy, law and governance, Central University of Rajasthan. I am also coordinating a national resource center for public policy and administration. Dear learners, we are going to look at an important topic for today that is evidence based policy making. In this lecture, we are going to look at what is evidence and what is a policy and what is evidence based policy making, what is the significance of policy making that is supported by evidence, different tools used in evidence based policy making, what are the application part of this evidence based policy making and some of the limitations. You know that public policy and politics are closely intertwined. Though Udo Wilson long time back said that politics and administration are both two separate disciplines, but there is an umbilical cord that is establishing a relationship between politics and administration. Conventionally speaking, politics is driven by the values, whereas public policies in technical terms is supposed to be fact oriented without beliefs, without ideologies. Now, when you talk about this particular topic on evidence. This is a very recent in the literature in public administration. However, if we dig into the history, we see that Aristotle long time said that our knowledge should be driving the society. What kind of knowledge that Aristotle is talking about? Aristotle is talking about a scientific knowledge that he is talking about. So, in one way or the other that the discipline of public policy influenced by its mother politics is having roots of that kind of knowledge. And to put it very specifically that conceptually public policies driven by evidence is of a recent in terms of uh, literature. Now, how is it very recent? It is very recent in the sense that there is an increasingly uh, recognition for the need of scientificity and the need for rationality in the collection of the data and that data is driving our public policies in contemporary times. Let me give you an example. Most of the medical sciences are supported by an evidence. If a patient goes to a doctor and the doctor administers a test or gives a particular kind of a drug to the patient, the patient very conveniently and without asking the scientificity of the drug he or she is taking, consumes that pill and see the results. So, what is important here is that the patient does not question the scientificity or the scientific aspects of the drugs because it is clinically tested. If that is the case, even the policies that our policy makers frame are supposed to be scientific in nature. So, that is the importance of scientificity while framing a particular policies and much of the evidence that we are talking about is coming from the medical science. So, that is how evidence becomes very important in the 21st century and more importantly our society is increasingly becoming data driven. That data is now called big data. 
Now, what do we do with the data? That data is given a meaning about a particular category of a society. So, even in social science research, this kind of data is very useful. That data becomes an evidence. That data becomes a research part. So, in this particular lecture, some of the key words that I will be using are data, analysis, evidence, rigor, etc., etc. Dear learners, this lecture has certain specific objectives. After listening to my lecture, you should be able to understand the meaning and significance of evidence in policy making, the advantages of policy making, and the steps or tools in the policy making, then application of evidence based policy making in developing countries, particularly India, and some of the limitations of evidence based policy making. So, these are some of the important objectives of my lecture. For the last few minutes, I have uh, introduced you what is the scope or what is the importance of evidence in medical field, in the politics and also in uh, policy science. If you look at the literature in public administration, we see that uh, evidence based policy making can be traced to the UK in the post 1990s. Uh, our, uh, we are very familiar with some of the important civil service reforms carried out by the then government led by Tony Blair in 1990s. In 1990s, uh, particularly in 1999, the Labour government led by him came up with a white paper on modernizing the government. In that paper, it is clearly mentioned that the public policies should be focusing on the policy problems. These policy problems should be addressing the issues that are having a larger implications to the society. And these policy problems may be perennial problems that must be addressed. So, if you want to address these problems, the, the policy makers are expected to move out of the myopic or short vision of the, the policies. So, the white paper clearly mentions that uh, the policy problems should address the issues in the long run. So, that is how evidence becomes very important to fix the problems that are troubling the societies, particularly we are talking about UK government. So, that becomes the an important aspect of evidence based policy making in the UK. In other words, we can say that public policy should specifically address or specifically should have a longer vision than being succumbed to the political politics of day to day. So, having seen the background of public policies, now let me give you a brief idea about what a public policy is. Though you might have learned about what a public policy, let me remind you in simple terms that public policy is a course of action that is determined by, by any particular government. In the language of Thomas R. Dye, we can say public policy is about what a government wants to do and what a government does not want to do. Now, let me take, uh, let me establish a connection between evidence and public policy. That is my major concern. Now, what is that evidence that we have been talking about? We have been talking about the evidence which is rigorous in terms of analysis which is scientific in nature, which stands scrutiny to the rationality in its policy analysis. That is what we mean by public policies with an emphasis on evidence. 
uh, we will also be looking at what evidence is about and what are the important characteristics in a few minutes. So, when I look at the public policies, these public policies to a large extent should be having an available evidence instead of simply giving certain beliefs and assumptions without any documentation. That is what exactly we require when you make a policy analysis. So, it must be systematic. As I have told earlier that Aristotle emphasized scientific knowledge and what is science? Science is something to do with systematic aspects of anything. Science is about systematic study of anything. Here also when we look at a particular problem of the society, we are expecting the policy analysts to be very scientific in collecting the data and using tools which are accepted by the scientific community and analyze the data and come up with certain findings and conclusions which are generalizable and which are replicable. So, this is what we mean by the policies supported by evidence. Obviously, this evidence is research based evidence. So, in other words, Evidence based research is nothing but the research based policies. In other words, policies that are supported by scientific evidence with rigorous analysis applying the tools and methods will lead to better policy outcomes. That is the significance of evidence in our policy making. Our policies determine our course of action. Take for example, climate change. If you do not have in a scientific evidence of how glaciers are melting, how it is posing a danger to the low lying areas. For example, Bangladesh, scientifically it is proven that in coming years that Bangladesh will no more be in our world map. It is supported by certain evidence. Take for example, pollutions and all of us are, are breaking our head, particularly policy makers, how to contain this issue of a pollution, population control, HIV AIDS. So, these are some of the pertinent issues that our policy makers at national level and international levels are grappling with. Dear learners, uh, having understood uh, the significance of evidence, let us look at some other important aspects of evidence based policy making. Why do we use evidence and what is the purpose of that evidence in policies? Now, the first and foremost aspect of uh, evidence is that when we use evidence in public policies, that will improve accountability in the uh, government. When we use evidence in public policies, that will improve accountability in the uh, government. You may ask how? It is so frequent and it is so common that, uh, that if you take the recent elections in Andhra Pradesh, that the former chief minister of Andhra Pradesh was having a, a report that uh, his government was doing better. And he, he relied extensively upon the data given by the permanent executive. But in contrast to that, the result shows something else. He kept on saying that his government would come to power again and again. Now, here we will see here, when you look at the data that is coming from the field uh, is otherwise. So, that is the importance and uh, when there is a gap between the, f the data that comes from the field and the, the data that is fabricated by few individuals 
and the governments lose the power. So, if you use the data wisely and uh, if the data is having rigor, then it brings accountability in the nation. Now, if the data is unbiased, if the data is collected, if the data is, is analyzed through all proper statistical tools, it provides key inputs to the government about how a particular program is to be implemented and what are the faults in the implementation of that particular program. From the top to the lower levels of the bureaucracy, it brings a, a kind of accountability in implementing a particular program. The second important aspect of the evidence-based policy making is that, that once the government knows that a particular program is derailed from the objective set out, then they can make mid-course corrections to put the policy on the track. So that is how they can make a corrective actions because they get a feedback right from the designing to the implementation and midterm assessments. So two important aspects, one is accountability, the other one is to implement the policies in a right manner and to monitor it and evaluate. In nutshell, the evidence will become so beneficial for the governments. Much of the policies are having cost benefit implications. So, the government keeps pumping money into a, a particular program. Maybe it may be a program of the pet program of the government. But if the government does not have a data about how much being utilized and in a right manner, the government tends to waste a lot of money. Probably, probably this is what we see. Uh, with the 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 erstwhile government uh, in Andhra Pradesh, and the reports are clearly showing uh, that there is a lot of mismatch between the work that the government has done and what the government claims to have done. So that's how the evidence will really bridge the gap between the intended outcomes and what exactly is achieved. All right, let's look at what exactly is this evidence and where does that evidence come from? Now, if you look at evidence, evidence by definition, we can see that it is apolitical. It is nothing to do with any political party. It's a fact, it's a fact. Now, in terms of Herbert Simon's word, uh, that's a fact is a fact and that fact drives the policy making and there are no particular ideologies that drive that particular policies and it's neutral because the figure speaks for themselves and then it is objective to a larger extent. Now when we look at these policies, this uh, policies if you are, if it is well informed, the experts knowledge on that particular aspect will become an important aspect of the policy making, published research, earlier findings, ongoing research, consultations with the different stakeholders and cost benefit analysis. Now all these will become important aspects of evidence and outcomes with different stakeholders on a particular project. So these are all evidence that we can see. And what are the possible sources of this evidence? Let us see. The possible evidence may come from photographs. We see in this digital era, and uh, we can say it's a, it's a digital society, photographs become an important source of evidence. Now take for example, the municipalities in Bangalore, if you, if anybody sees, any person sees uh, dust uncleaned by the municipal corporation on a particular day, they can click a photograph and send it to the municipal corporation 
and uh, in that photograph the time and place that unique time everything is captured then that is sent back to the government the, the government sends the vehicle immediately and takes the action so it is a photograph which plays an important role literary texts which are very traditional in nature even in 21st century that literature plays an important role as a source of evidence not to say much about it office files become important source of evidence sometimes autobiographies newspaper files ethnographic accounts all these become important sources of evidence dear learners so far uh, we have learnt uh, the background of evidence how medical field influences public policy making uh, the difference between politics and policy and what is a policy and what is an evidence based policies so these things we have discussed